James Kaufman, World News Report today. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a cannibal CME or a pair of coronal mass injections inbound for later this evening into tomorrow. Yes, what we need to know about the Labor Day night G2, G3 storm watches. A CME is inbound to Earth and the potential exists for a moderate to strong geomagnetic storm. A coronal mass ejection erupted from the sun, actually two, as I will show you guys, from three M flares on the 30th of August. These look to be traveling at over 2 million miles an hour, which is quite swift. The coronal mass ejection is Earth-directed and is expected to arrive around late afternoon, September 1st. So we're looking at about a 4 or 5 o'clock arrival today, and for this event to last through the night and into tomorrow. These watches represent our best analysis about potential only and are based on limited information. I will say that 2 million miles an hour is moving very fast compared to what we usually see regularly around 1.3 to 1.4 million miles an hour. What can be expected next? The Space Weather Prediction Center will not know the actual coronal mass ejection structure and the intensity until it arrives at Discover around 1 million miles from Earth. Remember, the Sun is 93 plus million miles from Earth at the Solar Wind Observatory spacecraft. That most definitely means Discover. We also have ACE up there. That will be approximately 20 to 50 minutes before arriving at Earth. And that's due or because they don't know how fast it's moving. It regularly takes about 45 minutes to arrive after it's our spacecraft. It is at that point that the true speed and strength of the CME will finally be ascertained and warnings and decisions will be made. Now, regularly, they never say this, which is worrisome. Our shields appear to be strong, and I've really never seen them hedging their bets as much as they are now. The leading edge of the coronal mass ejection, called the shock front or shock wave, will likely lead to initial geomagnetic response, potentially G1, G2 levels, late on September 1st, i.e. today. This will likely be followed some hours later by the geomagnetic core of the coronal mass ejection. A G3 storm condition becomes possible should the coronal mass ejection magnetic field be strong enough and its orientation favorable, the opposite of Earth's, which I don't think is the situation currently, Conditions could escalate quickly and might lead to a chance of a G4 severe level event. Space Weather Prediction Center notifies critical infrastructure operators about these storms. Those interested in seeing Aurora Borealis or Aurora Australis, uh, well, they should go outside and look to the north or look to the south, depending on which hemisphere you're in. And always remember your camera, regularly camera on your cell phone, picks these up much better than the human eye. Now, I will notify everyone when these hit our Discover satellites. I want you to look up here. The top one's our plasma density. And you'll see the two chrome mass ejections, Earth being the screen dot here. I'll get this out of the way. You'll see the first one here and the second one that actually goes into the color black here, which means it could be up to 60 centimeters cubed plus, actually catch the first one and become what we call a cannibal CME. So that's never a great thing. They have it hitting at around 4 or 5 this afternoon. They have it going up just under 30 centimeters cubed. But they have qualified it and said that they need to see it hit Discover first. I think the new chronograph that we have up is a, well, 
not a great instrument based on the fact that it's well not useful for three or four hours a day while supposedly the earth brightens it up so that you can't see plasma emissions next we'll look at the solar winds they should be pushed slightly in front of the plasma and solar winds also look like they come in two sets it's like they go up as high as about 700 kilometers per second but again they have qualified this you can see them here it's all the solar wind data here this is our wsa inlet solar wind prediction center here so it's going to be a one-two punch coronal mass ejection a cannibal ejection as it appears the stronger see me catching the weaker one and it looks like we're going to have a large solar wind component pushed in front of that so this could end up being a very strong they have it going up to strong this could end up being a severe solar weather event even though they're counting on a moderate to strong geomagnetic storm at the moment we're going to know more as the coronal mass ejection hits our discover and ace satellites uh, which should be around 3 30 or 4 i'm going to keep an eye on them on another computer and when they do hit i will let you guys know to put your tinfoil hats on and brace yourselves because well we're going to have a little fun today it's been a long time since we've seen the aurora borealis it is september it will be a september to remember it does in fact look like uh, our shields are strong right now and in the right position to stop most of the plasma and solar winds although we'll see if that changes as they impact earth's geomagnetic fields with that said folks god bless please share subscribe and always remember anything's possible bizarro world God bless you all.